Hi, and welcome to Patrick's Tech Lightning. This time I will deep dive and talk about the role of an Azure architect. I'll explain what type of skills that you need, how to get there, and also give you some tips for the interview. By the end of this video, you'll have a good understanding if this career path really is for you and how to get there. So let's dig into it. Here we go. First, I have to say that Azure Architect is a very broad term with no real industry standard as to what this role entails. The closest we have is the Microsoft description, which states, an Azure Architect is a person advising stakeholders and translating business requirements into designs for secure, scalable, and reliable Azure solutions. As you see, it's a very broad statement and can mean anything and everything at the same time. Of course, this is on purpose as it varies a lot between the different companies. Many IT companies, they also make the distinction between an Azure engineer and an Azure architect. Generally, the engineer is more focused on implementing while the architect creates a design of the landing zone. I think it's important that you don't focus on the terminology but more of the job content that you want. The Azure Sphere, it's incredibly large spanning so many services that you cannot be a master of them all. An Azure architect is at the very least someone who collects the business requirements and then translates them into a working landing zone. So let's break it down on the tasks that you should be an expert in. You need to be able to participate in requests for proposals. Potential new business is asking your company how you would develop a certain solution in the public cloud. This phase is heavily focused on document writing and formulating a potential solution on a very high level. When your company has won the business, the real fun starts. As an Azure architect, you are engaged to figure out how to bring the business to the cloud. This phase is focused on analyzing the client needs. Often it involves a lengthy phase of interviewing the client, meaning asking the right questions to get the correct business requirements applicable to the public cloud. You ask many questions for you to document the entire governance with licensing, management groups, subscriptions, and more. Then you go into the technical areas, asking questions how to set up the landing zone with connectivity, security, identity and access management, and what type of workloads. The Cloud Adoption Framework from Microsoft CAF is very useful here. Having gone through the process, you are able to architect the landing zone and the components within now. This has to be documented, along with all the financial benefits for the customer. This is then presented in a professional way, which the customer will ask you several questions on your solution. In any kind of deployment, you also have the solution in a service management. How will the Azure Landing Zone be maintained once it has been deployed? What are the control SLA requirements? Once all approvals are in, the work to build the Landing Zone can be started. Now, in addition to the tasks that I mentioned, it's not uncommon for an Azure architect to also proceed with the onboarding. You then get to modify the templates required for the infrastructure as a code, set up the DevOps pipeline, and also deploy the initial landing zone. Once the environment has been set up, you will need to hand it over to an operational team who are responsible for the day-to-day -day operations. You may feel overwhelmed because you are getting your feet wet in many technical areas technical areas, which usually have a dedicated team. How did you design the virtual networks, VNets in Azure? How did you set up the security part, Active Directory? All major areas where you will interface with teams and engineers who have done nothing else than their speciality for the past 15 to 20 years. As you can imagine, it will lead to many questions for you as an Azure architect, which of course results in very many interesting discussions and some that are not so interesting. What skills do you require as an Azure architect? Well, people rely on you to be the Azure expert, not the expert in the networking or Active Directory department. So first of all, get your overall Azure infrastructure knowledge under control. One way is of course to watch my weekly videos. I do recommend the Azure Fundamental course, which is an absolute must. Many architects, they tend to skip this as they think it's too basic. While indeed, I agree, it's basic, but it does teach you the general cloud concepts, not applicable only to Azure, but all the public clouds. The AZ900 track is linked in my video and will give you a very good base knowledge that you need under your belt. So having that one, it's a good idea to advance with the Microsoft Certified Solution Architect path. Now, personally, I think this course is a little bit too detailed in some areas, but overall, it's quite a good one. 
Make sure you understand the Microsoft Enterprise Scale Landing Zone and the Cloud Adoption Framework as they are key pillars which you can rely on for your design. When you're designing the landing zone, you're faced with some fundamental decisions which have to be taken early on. Will you utilize application gateways? How many of these will you have? Where exactly will you place them? Does your Azure Firewall require IDPS? If that's the case, and you also need an application gateway, beware of the special setup of the network flows between those devices. And that's where you need to shine. You need to know exactly what decisions to take in order to set up the Azure infrastructure. Then there's certain type of knowledge which you usually look up prior to a discussion as they change regularly and knowing that my heart is pretty useless. I'm referring to things such as the SLAs. Before you step into a meeting, you should have an idea what type of workload will be deployed. Based on that, always review the latest SLAs so you can also apply the right solution for the business. What makes a good Azure architect? Well, being a good architect is actually not what you know by heart. Sure, you need to have a very good foundation, uh, but that's it. The best Azure architects out there, they have a solid foundation of all the Azure services and solutions. It's impossible for you to know all the ins and outs of every service, as there are hundreds which are constantly changing. That said, there are some com core components which are a topic in most landing zones. I'm referring to technologies such as the Azure Firewall, Application Gateway, IaaS, Connectivity and more. With a very good foundation in your back, you're easily able to prepare and have all the details available for each discussion with the customer. If you have the ability to quickly learn and put new information together in a way that makes sense, then you are a good Azure architect. What are some of the downsides of being an Azure architect? Well, this is a tricky topic as it really depends on what type of person you are. You will be getting out of your comfort zone every single day. The Azure technology spans multiple areas and there will be always be dedicated engineers in those areas who are more skilled than you. So when you, for example, design the networking part of Azure, you might have to discuss with a dedicated network engineer who has done nothing else for the past 10 years. So I can assure you, he will give you some very interesting questions and going into a level you have never touched before. This is normal and you will have this with other areas as well, such as Active Directory, Security, just naming a few. So you need to be able to accept the fact that there will be other engineers who have expertise in those areas. So leverage them to your advantage and design your Azure solution accordingly. The possibilities in Azure, they change constantly and it's almost a full-time job to keep up with all the changes. In the beginning of this year, I was for example asked by a customer who wanted to bring their own public IP addresses into Azure. I was on the verge to tell them that it was not possible until a light went on in my head. Two days earlier, I had read an article that it's possible to bring your own public IPs and it had entered general availability in Azure. So keep yourself up to date, adapt and always question yourself if what you know is still accurate. If you're not working as an Azure architect, but want to land a job, I have a few interview tips for you. Be an expert in the concept of the Azure Fundamentals, AZ900. Understand on a high level how to solution an Azure landing zone. As I mentioned, this comes down to asking the right questions. Be an expert in the Microsoft Enterprise Scale Landing Zone. Now, this is not a major effort and it's quite easy to understand. Understand the Microsoft Cloud Adoption Framework, CAF. You don't need to know all the details here, just the key major points. Understand how to deploy services with infrastructure code. Understand Azure governance. If you really want to impress, you can take it to the next level. You can then start to understand and demonstrate that you know the Zero Trust architecture, how it applies to Azure, and also you can show knowledge of DevOps. Personally, I wouldn't really be impressed with someone who would be able to repeat the SLA tables completely by heart. Knowing the enterprise scale landing zone and the cloud adoption framework, that would make the candidate stand out a lot more. Also realize that you cannot know everything there is to know, and that's perfectly okay. Always show the thought pattern if you're asked a question which you don't know the exact details for. So for example, if you're asked to explain which virtual machines to deploy to meet a 99.99% SLA, talk about the process. It can go something like this. 
I would have to look up exactly which disks and configuration required to meet this SLA. However, I would also verify the high availability requirements. Is Azure Site Recovery a requirement? A high SLA usually requires multiple machines, meaning this most likely would be a deployment requiring a load balancer or virtual machines in different availability zones. In that answer, you have not only demonstrated your knowledge of how the technology works, but it's just a matter of mapping the SLA number to the correct solution. And for any interviewer worth their salt, it's more important that the candidate understands the technology. So that's all I had for this video. Personally, being an Azure architect is pretty awesome. I'm working completely end-to-end, -end, where I start with a request for a proposal, designing the landing zone, and ultimately also deploying it. Is it overwhelming? <laughs> definitely. It's not for everyone, but it's definitely my cup of tea. So, until next time, take care. See you.